Hello and welcome into another episode of Lockdown Wolves. This is the post game podcast from another Timberwolves late game collapse. There's been a lot of them lately, this time against the Chicago Bulls, a game that the Wolves led by 23, but they end up losing in overtime. We'll break the whole thing down. Uh, you know, how much is the fourth quarter collapsing like a legitimate issue? Are we seriously questioning how serious the Wolves are as a contender? Where does where does that slippery slope? kind of stop, right? Like how big picture are the issues? We'll break that down a little bit. We'll talk specifically about takeaways from this game too. It's all upcoming. Welcome in. You are locked on wolves. You are locked on Timberwolves. Your daily Minnesota Timberwolves podcast. Part of the locked on podcast network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Lockdown Wolves podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Beacon. I'm the host of Lockdown Wolves. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Happy Hump Day. And uh, I guess a not-so-happy Wednesday after another Timberwolves late game collapse. I, I do want to start with a bit of a... um taking a half step back. We're not going to go full 10,000 foot here. This is the post game pod after all, but I think we have to start with the discourse uh, that, that we're all seeing on, on X and elsewhere after this game and kind of like, Hey, what's the context of, of how this game I, context is so important, right? I gave a lot of context the last couple of days of the show. I want to take that half step back, talk about like, what are the actual macro concerns here? And what are, what is the quick, you know, post game overreaction that we're seeing or in game overreaction in a lot of cases. And then I want to talk some specific, like actual key takeaways from this game itself. We'll do individual studs and duds as well as we always do on the post game pod. A big thank you off the top for making lock that wolves your first listen every day. This show of course is free and available everywhere, including YouTube as well as all of your favorite audio platforms, wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find lock that wolves you can also watch on the lockdown sports, Minnesota app on both Roku and Amazon fire TV. And you can follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K E N. All right. So the facts here are that the Timberwolves blew another big second half lead. They were up by 22 at halftime. They led by 23 points early in the third quarter. And they still led by, would they lead by 19? No, sorry. Uh, they lost the third quarter by 13 points. Over 20, so they led by eight going to the fourth quarter and still had a, you know, multiple possession lead with about five minutes to play in the game. They're up like four or five, six points at the time. And, you know, there, I don't want to go low, blow by blow late. Of course, there were some things down the stretch. The, uh, well, we will talk actually a lot about the collapses at both ends of the floor, the Kyle Anderson technical from the bench, lots of things to get to, but, um, as I like to say a lot on the show, if you're a regular listener, I will often go with the, hey, all of these things can be true approach. And I'm going to do that today. Because these fourth quarter collapses are absolutely concerning. Yes, this team is, what, basically five and five in the last 10? Uh, yeah, they are five and five in the last 10 games now. Okay. And, you know, these late game issues against Orlando, the San Antonio loss, the first, the Oklahoma City loss a couple of weeks ago now, the Charlotte loss, like these are all bad losses. And yeah, OKC okay, is good. But the rest of these teams in Orlando will be a playoff team. But the rest of them are teams the Wolves should be beating, you know, relatively easily. I'll maintain the Orlando loss wasn't all that awful. It was a full strength playoff team like Orlando and also a good matchup or a bad matchup for Minnesota. Uh, but it doesn't change the fact that the late game execution is bad, right? So the fourth quarter collapses are absolutely concerning and it absolutely needs to get figured out. There's no question about it, right? Uh, Anthony Edwards will talk more about his tunnel vision and how he just got worse as the game went on in terms of passing the basketball. And that is, uh, that's a problem and we can't sugarcoat that, but it can also be true that earlier this year, the wolves were outplaying their point differential. They were playing well in close games, right? Their Pythagorean wing lot win loss was still, um, lower than their actual win total. In other words, they had some pretty good fortune early in the game and play these close games. Well, against good teams and middling teams. This is the same team that beat Boston in overtime back in early November. It's the same team that won in Golden State, which maybe looks a little less exciting now, but at the time, 
second, you know, they won two games in Golden State, the second of which was very close. They were both close games. They won a the cat game winner in New Orleans, the first OKC game, the most recent OKC game, the Miami game, the Clippers game. Like they've won a bunch of these games against good teams. Every team I just listed, except for probably one of Golden State and New Orleans, is a playoff team. And most of them, Clippers, OKC, Miami, Boston, are maybe not Miami anymore, but home court advantage teams in the first round of the playoffs. This is the same team. I, that OKC game was a week ago, nine days ago. Okay. So it's not like it, we can't, we can't have it all, unfortunately, right? This isn't the, the 73 and nine Golden State Warriors. It's not the, uh, it's not the Bulls of the 90s. You're going to win some close games. You're going to lose some close games. And the thing that encourages me, is that most of their close games against good teams, it's not like a, a true collapse. It's a close game back and forth, and you sometimes just lose at the end. Like the road game in Boston. Yeah, Ant wasn't great down the stretch. The late game execution wasn't great. But Boston's really, really good. And they took them to overtime on the road, right? The OKC lost. OKC's really good. Uh, you know, there's a couple other ones. Yeah, New Orleans lost mixed in. that wasn't all that great. The Knicks lost on New Year's Day, right? Like, but that's just how this thing goes. So these ones are concerning because they're teams they should beat. This game, you know, I would include the Orlando game, the Charlotte game, of course. Um, but it's not like they're collapsing against good teams in close games and falling apart under the pressure down late. It's almost like they're putting more pressure on themselves when they get up by 15, 20 points. And then, and then it's like, oh, no, it's happening. And remember, this was an issue a couple years ago for the Wolves. It was more third quarters. Uh, I think even last year, but third quarter was the bigger issue. Uh, in this game, it was third quarter. But for most of the year, it's been the fourth quarter, right? Third quarter has been good. Uh, even when they've been struggling lately, the fourth quarter has been the bigger problem. It's like the, oh, no, it's happening again. We were up 20. Now we're only up 12. And now it's seven. And now it's a one possession game. And we're going to lose. But in these games where they're going blow for blow, like the road game against the Thunder or both Celtics games or the Clippers game or whatever, uh, they have more of a confidence in those games. And I don't like, I can't diagnose whether that I, it feels like that's a better problem to have because in the playoffs, by definition, you're playing against good teams, right? It's a little bit like last year when the Wolves played to competition. It's not a good thing. I'm not at all saying it's a good thing, but it doesn't mean that it's necessarily an unserious team or a team that, you know, isn't the true contender or whatever you might want to call it. They're going to finish in the top four in the West. They are. Um, the question is, you know, what is, what does this look like in the playoffs? And I tend to still be heartened by what I think they'll do in the playoffs. We'll talk about that here in a minute or not today. That's a much bigger discussion than an ongoing discussion. Um, in terms of other things that can be true, like Kyle Anderson was bad in this game. Kyle Anderson struggled a lot this year, especially compared to last year. Could argue he had a career season last year in a lot of ways, and he's having the reverse of it this year. Uh, we can also be wringing our hands over the ant late game execution specifically. We'll talk more about that. All of the above can be true without this team. Like, you know, like all of a sudden things are completely falling apart. The wheels are coming off. By the way, Oklahoma city lost on Tuesday night at Utah. I know Utah's hot, but the bulls have also played pretty well without Zach Levine too. Right. Um, I wouldn't say that that loss is all that much better than the wolves loss. So OKC lost on the road at Utah. Oh, and by the way, I'll also, I also, I, I promise I won't pull this out after every time the Timberwolves lose a game, they should win. But I just got to mention, everyone's so worried about this five and the five stretch the Wolves have had. Last season, the eventual champion Denver Nuggets lost five out of six games two separate times in the final month of the season. Between March 8th and March 18th, and between March 30th and April 8th, they lost five out of six games, two separate times. Also, they had the exact same record as this, this year's Timberwolves. The last week of January, the Nuggets last year were 35 and 16. Actually, they were 34 and 16 after a loss to the Sixers. They lost three out of four and they were 34 and 16. They went on to win the title. I'm not, I'm not saying the Wolves are going to win the title. I'm not saying it's okay. I'm just trying to provide the perspective and the context. This is an 82 game season. And I know that that doesn't, I'm probably not supposed to do that on a podcast, right? Like I'm supposed to be reactionary, 
But like, let's let's be realistic here. It's an 82 game season. I'm not saying Chris Finch is the best coach in the league. I'm not saying the Wolves will win the championship. I'm saying that the exact opposite isn't true either. Chris Finch is a good coach. The Timberwolves are a good team. This will be a top four seed in the West. It may not be number one. It may not be number two, but it might be right. We're only <laughs> there's still 31 games left of the season. We're not quite two thirds of the way. There's a lot of basketball to be played. And the Timberwolves are still like <laughs> they were up 20 points in this game, right? All right. I want to do some some key takeaways from this game itself. A little bit of X's and O's, you know, what I saw from this one. We'll talk studs and duds too, and that's how we'll close the show here uh in a little bit. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our friends at eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience, what brings home the winning trophies, also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and leave it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Fit, eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay motors, you're burning rubber, not cash with all the parts you need at the prices you want. It's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit only available to us customers. Today's episode of lockdown wolves is also brought to us by our friends at prize picks. Prize picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. They're the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. It's just you against the numbers you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch your winnings roll in. It's demon time on prize picks. You can now win up to 100 times. That's 100x your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn 10 bucks into $1,000. Demons and goblins are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins can get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little, again, as little as four correct picks. It's a ton of fun. Um, obviously, there's a big game this weekend. Uh, in football, there's a bunch of basketball ongoing, and you can also cross sports, cross games, the whole thing, when you pick more than or less than whatever it is that you're taking uh, in that matchup. It's it's a ton of fun. Go to prizepicks.com slash NBA and use the code LOCKDOWNNBA for a first deposit matchup to 100 bucks. Again, prizepicks.com slash Locked on NBA code locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100 prize picks, pick more, pick less. It's that easy. The NBA trade deadline is tomorrow and locked on fantasy basketball is your place for live reaction Thursday. It's at 12 PM central 1 PM Eastern time. Subscribe to locked on fantasy basketball on YouTube today. So you don't miss the fantastic Josh Lloyd breaking down every NBA trade with analysis and insight that you can only get from Locked On Fantasy Basketball's Josh Lloyd. Locked On Fantasy Basketball is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right. Um, by the way, trade deadline. That would be another kind of, you know, has Kyle Anderson played his last game in a Wolves uniform, right? They don't, they don't play again until after the deadline. I tend to think no, not I tend to think. I'm 90%, 95% no. Kyle Anderson is not going to get traded regardless of how silly the technical was uh, and how badly he played before that in this particular game. I, I don't think, uh, I don't think Tim Connolly will be as reactionary as m much of the fan base, right? I mean, just, just call it like it is. I, I, I don't think that's the game Tim Connolly is going to play here. Um, we'll talk more about the trade deadline Thursday. I'd be really surprised if the Wolves made a trade on Wednesday. If they do, I'll do a, a podcast before then. But the Thursday morning show, we'll talk about the trade deadline. We'll talk about what I think the Wolves uh, should potentially do and might do. And if there's any additional rumors, we'll talk about that Thursday. Also, I should mention the Minnesota basketball party is the next episode in your feed, your audio feed. So depending on when you listen to this Wednesday, usually that audio posts. Uh, early afternoon on Wednesday, or you can go get it by late morning on the Lockdown Sports Minnesota YouTube channel. I guarantee you that uh, my friends Reggie Wilson, the Care 11 sports anchor, Ron Johnson, the Ron Johnson show, and Jack Bourne from Kenny Supis, and Sam Ekstrom, they're all going to have some pretty hot takes after this one uh, related to Wolves Bulls. We'll also talk trade line. So go check all that out 
again, audio will be midday Wednesday. Video is up late morning on Locked On Sports Minnesota on YouTube. All right. Uh, related to Wolves Bulls, a few quick takeaways here. I thought in the first half, the Timberwolves actually, the offense, I mean, I shouldn't, we shouldn't act surprised. They scored 69 points in the first half of this game. They were up 69 to uh, 47 at halftime. They were up 22 points at halftime in this game. And the offense was humming. And, and Kat and Ant were playing off of each other beautifully. Carl Anthony Towns had what seemed like a billion three-point attempts in the first half. Uh, they were just killing, uh, you know, a team that, the Bulls are one of the few teams that can actually match the Wolves in terms of size. And other teams haven't tried it or aren't able to do it. Mostly that they're not able to do it, just strictly from a body standpoint and also from a talent standpoint. The Bulls can actually make an argument for both. Now, nobody in their right mind would ever take Vucevic and Drummond over Kat and Rudy. But in this game, as a duo, when it was all said and done, the Bulls duo outplayed the Wolves duo. They did. And it was in the first half, it wasn't close one way. In the second half, it wasn't close the other way. Actually, I think Drummond played pretty well end to end in this game, as annoying as he was with his celebrations and the too small stuff. It's crazy. Uh, like their lines were pretty similar, Rudy and, and Andre Drummond, but Drummond outplayed Rudy for this game. Um, Cat outplayed Vucevic for most of the game, but the close was not strong from Carl Anthony Towns, other than the game time three at game time three at the end of regulation. I think that's easy to to forget. But I, I should also get in front of this is not a key takeaway, but I thought of it and I have to say it. Uh don't don't let Charles Barkley see this uh or Shaq see this box score, right? Cat shot the ball 22 times. He shot 16 threes. Uh that means he shot what eight twos. Um, I've already seen some chatter out there about like, you know, getting the post, all that stuff. Like, let's not do that. Let's not do that. That's not how the wolves lost this game. They didn't lose this game by not getting in the post. Um, I, like, I don't know how else to, I don't, shouldn't have to explain that. Um, the math behind a guy who's shooting 40, whatever percent from three. And by the way, did again in this game, seven of 16 from deep, including the game time three at the end of regulation, the wolves did not have a cat problem for this game. They had a, a, just a team wide problem in the second half and overtime. Right. Uh, so anyway, rewind a little bit. First half, the offense was great. Ant was being aggressive. Uh, not in fact, not, not super aggressive early, like late first quarter into the second quarters when he kind of got really hot, not kind of, he did get really hot, but then cat played off of that. Got a couple open threes. I actually had done in my notes. Ant was seeing the floor really well, and that's going to get lost. And, and understandably, cause he was awful in terms of passing and seeing the floor and distribution late in the game, decision-making, not just late in the game, starting in the third quarter. First half, Ant was actually pretty good with his vision. He hit Cat a couple of times. Uh, there were even a couple of plays where he didn't even get all the way into the paint or all the way to the baseline. He kind of stopped, and you could tell he even waited an extra beat to make sure that the double was coming so he could they could clear Cat, and he could get the pass back to Cat for the three from the top of the circle that he loves so much. And it was, it was genius. Like it was exactly what the wolves want Ant to do. And it like, it was the perfect dynamic of like, Hey, this offense could be a hundred percent unstoppable. Like nobody could slow down this offense. If it's working like this, 69 points in the first half. And uh, I mean, the bulls aren't a bad defensive team. They're pretty middle of the pack, especially without Zach Levine on the floor. Uh, I love Zach, but he brings that defense down with no Zach Levine. Um, he, like, Alex Caruso is an all defensive team guy and Drummond's a, a solid defender still. And, you know, uh, this is a, a, a middle of the pack at worst defensive team And Minnesota hung 69 points in the first half on them, but then things devolved. And in the second half, the bulls loaded up even more on ant. They brought more guys. And it's like when ant saw more white jerseys, he got more tunnel vision and he wasn't, he, the decision-making went away entirely. It was like, when they tried to force the force Ant to make a decision, it's almost like they knew exactly what Ant was going to do, right? They knew Ant was going to take the challenge in a bad way if you're a Timberwolves fan. They knew Ant was going to be like, all right, you're going to bring more guys at me. I'm going to score buckets anyway. I'm going to shoot over you. I'm going to get through you. I'm going to get the foul call. It probably hurt the Wolves that the uh, Tony brothers ended up, got hurt, the official, and there were only two refs in the second half of the game. Um, I mean, Ant got to light a bunch early. He had, what, eight free throws at halftime, I think? And he finished with 11, if I'm not mistaken. Um, But Ant messed up. Like, he saw more jerseys and he thought, okay, that means I just got to play hero ball. 
And if he had just played like he did in the first half, now it's trickier when they're like legit doubling you everywhere on the floor, which they basically were. It makes it tougher. And to make matters worse, every single other Timberwolves player was bad down the stretch of this game. Every single one. Uh, Rudy was okay in the paint, had a couple big offensive rebounds, but he wasn't good defensively. And uh, I, like I, I'm not going to sit here and say Rudy played really well. He didn't. He was outplayed by Drummond. McDaniels was actively bad late in this game. Uh, third quarter, turning the ball over. They brought in Kyle Anderson. He was so bad early in the fourth that McDaniels had to come back in. McDaniels ends up with four turnovers and only three assists, six of 11 shooting. Missed a big three late, an open corner three-point attempt. Conley wasn't very good late. Ended up three of seven on threes. He had eight assists to no turnovers. Not a great Conley game. He missed a shot, uh, at least one, if not two big shots late from the perimeter. And uh, I talked about Cat. He didn't quite assert himself the way he needed to late. That's more on Ant than it is on Cat because it turns out you need the ball in your hands to be truly assertive. And Cat hit the big three at the end of regulation. But I would not sit here and tell you that Cat, Jaden, Rudy, or Conley all played, any of them played well. Nobody else really got an opportunity after Slow Mo kicked away his chance in the fourth quarter. Nas was fine in the first half, didn't get much of a chance in the second half. McLaughlin didn't see the floor in the second half, which, you know, I can't tell if that's, I, I don't, fully know what to make of that. I don't necessarily think that that makes it any more likely the Wolves trade for a point guard on Thursday. Alexander Walker only played 19 minutes in this game. I don't know. I, I, I'm not saying Chris Finch should have played the bench guys more. That wasn't the solution necessarily. But uh, things just got away from the Wolves late in this game. And and, and I, I put most of the blame on Ant's decision-making and, and the way he handled the Bulls, uh, credit the Bulls, by the way, for for loading up on him the way they did. On the other end of the floor, the defense was brutal. But similar to the Spurs game, it was the defense was bad, allowing them back into the game. There's no question about it. I mean, uh, like, they were not giving, Kobe White started the game 0 of 5 or 0 of 6. And then the Wolves gave him a couple openings. He made a couple layups. He made a couple open threes. And the defense wasn't good. And then all of a sudden, a, a, a switch flipped. And the Bulls were just flamethrowers. And they couldn't miss. It was like that Spurs game a couple of weeks ago. And Chicago made some crazy shots. I mean, Vucevic made a couple of really tough shots. He made two threes in this game. He's a sub-30% three-point shooter. Kobe White made a couple of ridiculous shots. Like, this was, this was all of the above things happening. It was bad defense. And then combine that with, with just... Hot as a pistol offense, and that's what it was from the Bulls. And then on the Wolves' side, it was credit the Bulls for their defensive plan in the second half of this game, and the Wolves just failed to execute. And I put that more on Ant. The Wolves were running stuff. Like I've often said, hey, they got to run stuff late. They tried to run stuff. The Bulls just forced them out of it. And they also had some incredible defensive plays. Alex Caruso had a, a, a couple steals. There was one where he was doubling the ball and then basically switched on the fly and then popped into the passing lane ended up with a, a steal and, and took it the other way. Vucevic, Drummond, and Caruso each had four blocks in this game. The Bulls blocked 16 shots. Four by Vucevic, four by Drummond, and four by Alex Caruso. Caruso had two steals. DeRozan had four steals. Um, it was a defensive clinic down the stretch from Chicago. And the Bulls had, with one minute left in the second quarter, the Bulls had 42 points. Okay. So in the first 23 minutes, the Bulls had 42 points. In the final, see if I can do my math, 25 minutes, the Bulls had 85 points. That's crazy when you lay it out that way. I'm I'm gonna that, that's crazy. I didn't even realize that until sitting here right now. Cause I I wrote down the Bulls only have 42 points with one minute left in the in the second quarter. They finished with 129. Now, uh, uh, in 25 minutes, shoot, it was an overtime game. So 30 minutes, right? Final 30 minutes. Or you take out overtime, it's still crazy. You know, whatever that number is, 81 or uh, 71 points in 25 minutes. Like, that's still crazy. All right, I want to close with some quick individual studs and duds. I kind of hit a couple of them quick. And uh, then uh, some final thoughts here. That's how we'll end the show today. Today's episode of Lockdown Wolves is brought to us by our title sponsors over at Game Time. 
You should not have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets to your next big event. Game time is also the best way to buy any sort of, uh, not just sports, also music, comedy, theater events near you with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their best price guarantee. Game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat before you buy, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Their all-in prices show you your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal before you even check out. You can buy your tickets in seconds with two taps. They're obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. You can find exclusive flash deals and sponsor deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. Plus, the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section of row for less elsewhere, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code LOCKEDON, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right, uh, individual studs and duds from this one. It's actually kind of tough. It, it's really hard to come up with a stud. In fact, I don't know that I've ever done this where nobody gets a stud. But not this year, at least, certainly. Maybe over the last couple of years. I don't know that I can give anybody a stud. Like, first half Ant was unbelievable. First half Cat, unbelievable. Nobody played well in the second half of this game. Like, literally nobody. I would call out the worst performances as Kyle Anderson uh, with a, a bad turnover in the paint, uh, an assist that he got lucky that it got through to Rudy, who barely made a shot. And then I think the next time down, he had a bad read. I don't think it was a turnover, but there was a bad read in there from Slow Mo in, in 16 minutes. I would say Slow Mo was the worst player on the floor for the Wolves. Um, I would probably say Jaden McDaniels was next. Jaden did not have a good game. Uh, I, I, you know, early he had a couple tough shots, they were ill advised shots. He made them kind of made things feel okay, but it was not a great Jaden game. I would say those two guys played the worst. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to use my individual stud and dud time to, to talk uh, technical fouls here. I'm going to, I'm going to nitpick first on the officials very quickly because I'm not blaming the officials for this loss, but I will point out that Rudy Gobert or that defensive three seconds when the bulls bulls were making their uh, comeback. I think this was early mid fourth quarter. Rudy was called for a defensive three seconds and it wasn't the right call. Uh, he did cleanse, and if you watch the replay, they don't call it until after he gets back in. So the ref just didn't see him cleanse out of the paint with both feet. He did. And then like one second later, they called the three-second. I know they were operating with two officials, um, which makes it all the more reason to not call that ever with two officials because like, there's no chance you're not missing it every other time down the floor. So if you're not 100% sure, like 100% sure, In a one possession game in the fourth quarter, you don't make that call. So that's frustrating because that's one point. That's one point right there. Also, Cat missed a technical free throw uh, when the Bulls were called for a technical. So there's another point. And then the Kyle Anderson technical. There's another one. So three points at technical free throws, the Wolves lose. Um, One, a missed shot by themselves. One, a missed call by the official on a bad three-second call. And then the other was equal parts Kyle Anderson, like, what are you doing in a two-point game after team makes a bucket complaining so, um, I would say vociferously, to use a, a ridiculous word, off the bench, like demonstrably, demonstratively, demonstratively waving at the official. Uh, I mean, letter of the law, I guess that's a technical, but then also the official, like, what are we doing? Like, why are you so worried about what the bench is saying to you? You're one of two officials on the floor. Pay attention to the game and tune that out in a one possession game in the fourth quarter with one minute left. Right. So uh, in the spirit of all these things can be true, because why not? I'm just like saying it all. I'm like, this is all stuff that happened. Right. I'm not taking a firm stance on this. I'm just. Like, we have to acknowledge that all of these things are true. The officials messed this up. The Wolves were careless, uh, you know, related to the technical fouls. And it hurt the Wolves in a game that went to overtime. I'm not going to play the, hey, without the Kyle Anderson technical, they win by one. We don't necessarily know that's the case. We don't know Cat shoots that three if they're if they're up, you know, down two instead of down three, right? Like, that. I'm not going to play the butterfly effect game. I'm simply pointing out this game went to overtime. The Wolves lost three points 
due to their own problems and the officials' problems on technical fouls over the course of this game. All right, that's it. I don't have anything else on this game. The, uh, it, it, you know, tune into the Minnesota basketball party. I promise you it's going to be entertaining. Um, there's going to be thoughts shared by everybody. And, uh, I'm going to likely not likely, I'm going to stick to my guns on all this. Cause I'm sure there's going to be some takes on there that the sky's falling for the wolves and perhaps some even less sky's falling takes than I have. Um, so tune into that for sure. Now, next up, of course, it gets only, only gets more difficult for the wolves, which might actually be a good thing at Milwaukee on Thursday night, 7 PM game. And then after that, the wolves don't play till Monday. So leave a good, hopefully they can leave a good taste in their own mouths as they head into a long weekend back in Minneapolis before three road games prior to the all-star break. Of course, Milwaukee, since hiring doc rivers, I believe they're one in three only beating Dallas in there. They just lost to, uh, they just lost to the Jazz, man. And they're actually, as I'm recording this, they're playing the Suns and they're down 12 with about nine minutes to play. So Milwaukee's likely to be one in four under Doc Rivers. And uh, Chris Middleton sprained his ankle too. So he likely won't play on Thursday. So all that to say, should be a really fun game. First time we've seen the Bucks this year. We'll see them again here in a couple of weeks after the All-Star break. But uh, Thursday, we'll talk trade deadline. The trade deadline's Thursday afternoon. So by the time the Wolves take the floor again, there's a chance that the roster looks a little bit different. We'll talk about that on Thursday's show, of course. A big thank you for making Lockdown Wolves your first listen every single day. Of course, the show is free and available everywhere, including YouTube, as well as all of your favorite audio platforms. Wherever you like to listen to podcasts, you can find Lockdown Wolves. You can also follow on X at Lockdown T Wolves and also at B Beacon with two B's, two E's, C K. E-N. A reminder that the Lockdown Wolves podcast is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. Remember, the Lockdown Network is your local experts on all the biggest stories. Once again, I'm Ben Beacon. This is the Lockdown Wolves podcast, and we'll catch you next time.